In this video, we'll be taking a look at how a custom built application on ServiceNow can help in automating the procure to pay cycle. The purpose of this demo is to showcase some key capabilities of creator workflows, particularly the integration to an ERP system such as SAP. You'll be using the out-of-the-box SAP ECC integration spoke, and you'll be able to find more details about this spoke on our documentation site, as well as other similar ERPs supported by Integration Hub, such as S4HANA and Oracle EBS. Here's the typical process flow within the procure to pay cycle, which we'll be using to illustrate through our custom app. We'll start with the requester who needs to raise a purchase request. Once the purchase request has been created, we then go through an approval process before a purchase order is created in ServiceNow and integrated into SAP ECC as the system of record. Next, we wait for the goods or services to be received via a goods received functionality before creating an invoice to fulfill the three-way match. The last step would then be to wait for payment on the invoice before we close out the cycle. For clarity, this custom application is built to show what is possible within App Engine Integration Hub through a straightforward use case, and features are not exhaustive with regards to capability or usability of ServiceNow or SAP ECC. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this demo. Putting ourselves into the shoes of the person who needs to raise a request, the requester, we start in the employee portal, which contains all accessible services by the logged-in user. For example, let's go to the account payable catalog to see all available services under the category. Here you have items like invoice approvals and even a request for vendor updates, which integrates directly to SAP Ariba. However, let's initiate this purchase request via our chatbot, Virtual Agent, instead. This provides users with an interactive experience to guide them through the creation process. I'll type in need to purchase an item and through natural language understanding, the bot automatically filters the closest matches. Proceeding with the re raise a re purchase request action, I'll first enter the item I'm requesting for, followed by the vendor for this request. I'll then enter the unit price and quantity before confirming my request. These are the details that we passed into SAP ECC as well. A requester will immediately have an insight into his request record. And here you can see all the other details which includes fields from the vendor's contract. As a requester, I might also wish to communicate with the fulfillers of the request, which is what I'm doing here. Now we move out of the requester's experience and into the fulfillers view. This is the procure to pay workspace, where the entire cycle can be managed in a single location. What we're looking at is a dashboard, which contains configurable widgets that can be tailored to every individual's role. Here, I've set up a few simple widgets that gives insights into the different stages of the P2P process. Since we created a new purchase request, let's go ahead and drill into the 28 records we see here and further into our newly created request. There's an exception checking at play here which verifies that the PR amount is within the allowable contract budget. But many other business rules can be tailored to each request type as well. Let's test this one out by entering an amount higher than the allowable budget, and you can see an error is flagged. So depending on how strict you need the rules to be, you can block different record actions as well. Rules and actions like these will help to reduce manual checking work and improve the quality of data that makes its way into your target system of record. In this case here, SAP ECC. Another amazingly useful feature within Workspace is the ability to embed what we call playbooks. Playbooks help guide your fulfillers through the process. We see here that there are five major sections for purchase request, purchase order, goods received, invoice, and payment. Within each section lies the granular steps that can either be manual, like instructions or user inputs, or automated such as integrations, approvals, or notifications. Here in the purchase request section, we see that after the purchase request record is created and marked complete, a knowledge article automatically appears to show the user instructions to complete the entire process. We can acknowledge this before moving into the approval stage. So what we've defined is that for every new purchase request, we will go through a one-stage approval via the requester's manager, whose account we will be impersonating to view the request. So in the very same portal that we saw before, we are logged in now as Fred and can see the outstanding approvals being assigned to him. Opening the record will show details, including the comments that were entered by the requester. 
We will simply approve the purchase request at this stage, but note that approvals can be done via email, the mobile application, and even conversational tools like Teams or Slack. Returning to our playbook, we can see that the process has been completed and an email notification has been sent to the requester informing him that the purchase request has been approved and also that a purchase order has been created in SAP, showing the document number. Let's then take a look at this new purchase order record that was automatically created. The relationship between the purchase request and purchase order is always maintained, giving full visibility into any parent and child record. In this PO, we see the SAP document number and we'll go ahead and copy that so that we can view the output in our SAP ECC interface. Here we see that the PO has been created in SAP and opening the record, we verify that the relevant information shows up as well. The next stage in the cycle would be to create a goods receipt. What I've done is to automatically create a goods receipt whenever a purchase order is approved so that the receiver can go ahead and receive the goods or services via his mobile application. Notice in this screen that the state is currently open. So let's go ahead to the mobile application and we're looking at the custom applet that was built for this procure to pay application. Essentially, users can choose to work their entire way through this process via this mobile experience as well, if needed. Here we can see the purchase order record that was created and all these other modules. But let's open the list of open goods receipts and we only see one record which we can go ahead and receive. This will change the state accordingly. Um, but before heading back to the workspace, a user can choose to create new records such as an invoice record, giving the ability to take or attach files or even photos and even having a signature as well. Back in the workspace, the state has been changed to received and another approval is automatically triggered. This time, it's routed to a group of individuals, in this case here, the procurement team, where any of them can go ahead and prove this GR record. I'll just go ahead to approve via my user and returning to the GR details screen, you'll notice that three fields have been changed automatically, marking the state to close complete, making the record inactive and getting the newly created GR document number ending in 1090 from SAP. This is, so, this is because we triggered the integration after the approval. Opening the PO record in SAP, we now see the GR under the purchase order history of the PO document as that information was passed through via the integration in Integration Hub. So once the invoice has been received, we can then create a new invoice record against the purchase order, which I'll go ahead and do here. I'll also go ahead and attach the PDF file of the invoice to this record. You can even further automate this process by allowing vendors to email a shared inbox directly so the record is automatically created and the attachments are automatically pulled or having them submit these invoices via a vendor portal within ServiceNow, for example. Once we save this invoice, let's for the last time head back into SAP where we can view the new invoice document created via our integration workflow in the purchase order history. The last step is to close out this P2P process would be to recognize when a payment has been made within SAP. And ServiceNow will fetch these unmatched records on a specific timed interval and once a match has been found against an unpaid PO and service now, we can then register it to the PO record and finish out this entire process. So in summary, we have seen that against a single purchase request record, we created a purchase order, which is linked to a goods received invoice as well as payment record. And this performs our four-way match. So what next? Since we now have access to all these data and service now, users can go ahead and start building out reports and widgets using the same data. One nifty features analytics center where you can quickly make sense of your data just by asking questions. For example, typing show me all open purchase orders will return the list of all purchase orders that are currently set to open state. And typing purchase request by state as a bar chart will do exactly what it says. So the real value actually comes in how quickly, effectively, and easily this application was built. I'll take a short amount of time to show you App Engine Studio, which is where I built this entire application. 
within our custom application scope, you have access to the application files such as data tables, UI experiences, workflows, and user access controls. Here you can see that there are six tables that I created for this application. And opening the purchase order table for reference, you can very easily tailor and add any new um, or edit any existing fields to meet requirements. Experiences allow you to create the mobile application that we just saw, the entire workspace, as well as catalog items, which sits in the employee portal where we first raised that request. All these were built without using a single line of code. Lastly, Flow Designer gives you the unfettered ability to automate any process. Taking a look at what powered the PR to PO process, you can see here is where we define the approval as well as triggered a reusable subflow to create a PO within SAP. Drilling down into the subflow, you can then see that we are using the out of the box create purchase order action to integrate into SAP ECC via the RFC spoke. But you have access to all these other actions as well. And if these don't meet your requirements, you can always go on to extend the use of the integration spoke to meet your custom needs. So this is just the beginning of the lengths to which we can automate your custom processes. In this example, using the various tools provided by ServiceNow as the engagement layer above SAP. Thank you, and please reach out to me if you have any further questions.